what's going on guys welcome back to learn crypto my name is Nick Hellman and today we have with us Bitcoin Ben there you go how you doing today living the dream brother how are you doing today pretty good I know you're traveling so we won't take too much of your time but wanted to get you on here to kind of talk about the uh, Guinness Book of World Records or potentially world record Bitcoin meetup that you got going on in Texas I think it's April 6th if I'm correct yes sir it, uh, in fact I guarantee that we will beat the world record because there isn't one. There you go. Be a part of history and come out and have some fun. <laughs> We're going to beat the hell out of that record because <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> I think I can share the screen here if you want to talk a little bit about it, and then uh, we'll go ahead and move on. Okay, yeah. It's, uh, it's April 6th. And it is in uh, in Blanco, Texas. And it's uh, the reason we did it in Blanco, Texas was was because it's uh, it's literally like the coolest place in the world. As in, like uh, as as you. And see, there's like a chapel, there's a general store, there's an old friggin' bank, and uh, uh, and one of the uh, sponsors are actually bringing a Lamborghini. Wow. And they're actually going to park a Lamborghini like right near all of these old, old cars and and like all this other stuff and uh and we're actually gonna have live music uh <clears throat> and just a ton of influencers i think you're actually gonna be there aren't you? yeah you're yeah i'm gonna be making the trip down there um i know other people that you guys might recognize from the rapids team i think this hasn't been officially announced but I think Rapids Network it is, is now. <laughs> it's going to be one of the uh, sponsors of the event. So I think uh, the found the co-founder and one of their marketing agents is actually flying from the UK to be at that event. Uh, yeah, Crypto, Crypto Wendy is going to be there. I think Blake Rizzo is going to be there. Um, yep. A bunch of the Pack team from Pack Coin is yep. going to be there. So should be pretty exciting times. And a lot of the sponsorships haven't been announced, uh, but I think it's just a good centralized location in the United States. And like you said, the atmosphere is going to be pretty cool because I'm pretty sure all those. Uh, buildings are open to the public like you can kind of go yeah. in there there's gonna be concessions set up everybody's gonna be having fun so it's gonna be people who don't know about crypto beginners all the way up to advanced i think there's gonna be some great giveaways from some of these projects and on top of that i think it's only 20 bucks a ticket and it's a hundred percent of it going to charity uh yes. which on top of that even even better and then like we said being the guinness book of world's records be a part of crypto history and uh it should be a good time absolutely um uh um no one is making money in the office and it it's um and that's exactly what i wanted i because cryptos because of the mainstream media and you know the powers that be right now uh all you ever hear is oh you know terrorist drug it's we um we wanted to have an event and involve the, the at uh, looks like they just landed. There you go. <clears throat> and we wanted to involve the Guinness Book of World Record because um, not only will they advertise and be all over their website and all and press releases and you know, all of the information out there was to let the world know that there's a whole other world of actual cryptocurrency, you know, and, and I wanted to make sure that this event wasn't around one coin, you know, because everyone's got their favorite coin, you know, everyone's got their favorite project. And but what we really have is we have one huge cryptocurrency community and and really I've went all over the world with 
boot uh, with cryptocurrency. And everyone is so nice. You know, everyone's friendly and and loving and they care about freedom and choice and and they don't care what color you are. They don't care, you know, what religion you are. They don't all they care is that you you love cryptos, you know. It, it's and I think that's a good thing for this event too. Like you said, it's kinda can sway what the mainstream media is saying, at least right now. Uh, you know, drug dealers, terrorists, you know, what hackers is what you see a lot of the time, people stealing from other individuals. But that's such a small percentage of what's really going on. I think this can kind of shine light to you know, the average Joe in Texas who might just come for the festivities to learn a little bit about cryptocurrencies, the monetary policies that might be flawed with fiat currencies that cryptos are trying to solve. And then, like you said, it's not just about Bitcoin, which has the biggest network effect or somebody's favorite crypto, but really just cryptocurrencies in general and blockchain technology and just kind of opening the eyes and starting to change uh, the relationship people have with cryptocurrencies, at least that mainstream media is trying to feed them at times. Even though I think that's going to change here shortly with the institutions starting to come into play. Once they launch their backed and Erisex and TD Ameritrade and JPM coin, that's all going to be changed because they have the money to pay for it to change. So it's all paid articles out there. So that's coming too. Absolutely. And, um, uh, and, um, uh, uh, the Wild West crypto show, uh, especially Drew, has has really been, uh, boy, he's been kicking ass and taking names, and he's uh, he has the chamber, the chamber of commerce is in is actually involved, and we are putting a big old uh, sign out in front, you know. Cryptocurrency meetup, world's largest cryptocurrency. So, so everyone driving by will see this big old sign, like, and all these crazy people out there, like, laughing and having a good time and loud music and and uh, and enjoying themselves. And they're just pull over and go, "Well, what the hell's going on in Blanco?" Yeah. You know? yeah. And. Because Blanco is really close because I already booked my flight and my bed and breakfast and everything. And it's like almost makes a triangle with Austin, Texas, and San Antonio. So it's like a 45-minute drive from either Austin or San Antonio. And I think I'm staying on a lake called Canyon Lake right there in the kind of middle of that triangle. So it should be pretty cool. And it's, it's by two large bodies of population. So it should be exciting to see if we can get just people that just want to have some fun. And then maybe they'll learn a little bit about crypto too. Exactly. Because this event is uh, is not only us all like getting together and actually meeting each other. Because you know, uh, I've uh, I've actually seen your show, you've seen my show, but none of us have. You know, it's all like online and yeah, a, virtual. <laughs> and uh, and we we are gonna have so many so many influencers. Um, they're like yourself, uh, me, Wild West Crypto Show, Big Weir, J Snip Four, um, like, um, oh, I. There's a bunch of yeah. Oh yeah, there's like Bad Boy Podcast is heading down there. Crypto One Day, Jason Berlin. So, sure, yeah, exciting, and it's a good opportunity for you who watch all these videos to kind of meet the people in person. And I kind of mentioned it in my last recording video for the projects that are going to be there. You know, it's. To not see, you, you guys can do your own research on projects, but to see not what you're investing in, but who you're investing in. You're seeing these uh, transparent teams in person. As you do know, some teams are still anonymous or they use a fake picture or a fake name. Well, you know, it tells you a little bit about a, a, something about a project if they're willing to go out in person, shake your hand, look in your eyes, explain what's going on. You know, they're being as transparent as they can with you. So it should be exciting. I'm excited too because I haven't, like you said, I haven't met a lot of these people besides maybe a zoom call or watch their show or have done research on their project. That's about it. Yeah. Um, uh, these projects that are launching now, in fact, that's why I'm actually in Port, Port, Portland, Oregon right now. I'm, uh, I'm helping launch a, uh, a project that is basically going, going to get rid of how of how 
of Hollywood as we know it. And it's like in 2017, you had a lot of ICOs that were just shit. Mm -hmm. They were like, exactly like we're launching the best coin that ever coined, you know, and, <laughs> and everyone's like, wait, uh, your, your white paper is a copy and paste of like dash and, uh, and all of the leaders of your project don't exist. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I think that's another thing too. The projects who have been around before the bubble in 2017 and the ones who are launching this year, especially not out an ICO, are ones to take a look at because it's not a money grab at that point. If they didn't have an ICO, they don't have a stash of money. And if they're creating and building during the bear market, well, that tells you something there. They're not in it for the money because, you know, Bitcoin is showing some nice price action. You know, I personally think we bought them when we hit 30, 31, 24 or whatever. But I nobody, really, nobody really knows. You know, nobody really knows. So we'll kind of just wait and see. But, uh, that just shows you. Well, it's, it's, um, now this is my personal opinion, but I've also talked with leaders of major exchanges. Mm -hmm. And what we have going on right now, um, at least it was explained to me, was a lot of the shit exchanges that, um, that weren't holding the coins that they said that they had, those are going away. And it's really showing the, uh, the price rises lately are starting to reflect the actual buying pressure of these real coins. Yep. And uh, as when you have these exchanges that claim they have coins and then people are buying it that's not really generating any upward pressure yeah because it's more like fractional reserve like what the bank does where it's like all right i put a thousand in your bank and then they loan out nine thousand the whole purpose they, of cryptocurrency is the finite supply set inflationary rate so if you have digital bitcoin on this poop exchange that is trading well now you have all that liquidity being spread out rather than directly on the underlying asset so you're either going to see them disappearing, like you're saying, and then you're going to have more positive price moving from that, or the smaller exchanges that weren't holding, they got to reappropriate, meaning if they want to still exist, they got to go out and buy those coins because regulation's coming, investors are looking for it. So, and if they're going to go out to an exchange and buy it, that's going to cause upward pressure as well to cover their books. So we'll see. Exactly. Uh, plus these larger reputable exchanges uh, like uh Kraken and like coin, especially Kraken. I mean, Kraken, if you know the CEO of Kraken, he's old school. You know, he is old school. You know, if it ain't on the blockchain, it ain't a trade. Yeah. You know? And, uh, and he's, he's excellent. Uh, Coinbase. Yeah, I can't really say nothing bad towards Coinbase because really they're uh, uh, they're one of the OGs, you know. And uh, but I, I think they're moving t more towards the regulatory friendly exchange where Kraken's more like you know, screw you, Feds. Yeah, you know, they're trying to fight back. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when people ask me what exchanges to use, uh, Coinbase is probably the most heavily regulated. It's based out of the United States. Bittrex is heavily regulated based out of the United States. They also just opened Bittrex International. Kraken, Poloniex, yeah. bought by a traditional investment company, and then Binance. So Binance, out of all the ones that I recommend, is the one that isn't in the United States and isn't as heavily regulated. And some people, you know, some people hate it. Some people hate, love CZ for whatever it may be. But, you know, they've generated a ton of liquidity over there. They've generated a lot of users. And uh, that's really what you're looking for. And up to this point, there's been no hacks. And, you know, with how many people fud on them or hate them, that people are trying to hack their wallets. But it seems like their security is doing quite well. So I have nothing to complain about Binance either. 
Uh, and, and and they're creating the first user friendly decentralized exchange. Yep. Which I really stress the user friendly. Uh, the, uh, as you've had other like uh, decentralized ex uh, exchanges like uh, let's see, like Ether Delta, yeah. But my God, pretty tough. Pretty tough. It's just, I mean, it is like the equivalent of a caveman trading cryptos. Yeah, and so then it, even even with the new Dex by Binance, Binance Dex, some people are like, well, it's not a true decentralized exchange because there's still nodes and some centralization. It's like, yeah, but damn. here's the thing. The thing, the whole thing that people don't realize is, yes, you have a little bit of a centralized backing there with the node structure, but the purpose of a decentralized exchange is you can trade your cryptos while still holding the private keys. It is creating that. It's creating a user-friendly way to keep, I can keep my Bitcoin in my wallet right here and then trade peer-to-peer -peer with somebody else that's not sitting on an exchange that might just have the Bitcoin, even though they don't, you own your private keys still. So that's really the purpose of the DEX. And like I said, if it's not user friendly, who's going to use it? You know, I preach to always keep your cryptos in your personal wallet. But when I trade, I don't use a DEX just because it is a little bit harder. I just use Binance or one of the regulated exchanges because I feel a little more safe doing that. So. Yeah. And, it, uh, and that's something people need to really realize is we are still way early in this. I mean, uh, I've actually been in it for three, three, hell, like three or four years. I don't know. It all blends together now. <laughs> yeah, they all blend together. And, uh, and uh, it's, it, we're evolving quickly, but People who watch it like us every day, it seems like it's crawling. You know, we're like, oh my God, when are we going to get this or when are we going to get that? And it's because we live in cryptocurrency, which means that we're moving so much quicker than the rest of the world, but yet we still have to have a realistic view that the the advancing platforms in cryptocurrency uh, hey man give them time they're building you know this is not this isn't uh, this is this is not going to happen overnight and you don't really want it to because with uh code you know one wrong move, and I mean, Binance has a bad reputation. Yeah, it's the same. It kind of goes back to like when Ethereum and Ethereum Classic forked because the DAO happened and lost like thirty million. And technically, code yeah. is so you shouldn't have got your money back. Ethereum Vitalik is like, no, we need to get the money back, and that was one line of code that they messed up. And I, and when I when I explain to people like, oh, what's taking so long for this or that? Like you said, we're living it, so it seems slower. But also, it's like think of the internet. You know, 10 years ago, you're still on dial up, plugging into your phone jack. And now me and you can be across the nation on a Zoom call recording these videos and post them to YouTube. And it takes like a minute to upload it, too. So, I mean, it's pretty crazy. And the advancements take time. You know, it's been around for a couple of decades now and they're still adding on to it. So. Absolutely. I it's. Uh, plus. Uh, and I haven't done a video on this, but I wanted to. Uh, we're at a point where where hardware is not the issue. This is all software, yeah. and and software advances so much quicker than hard hard hardware because there's no manufacturing, you know, of a product and hoping it sells and all that stuff. Like with the int, the int. Internet grew, but it grew at a rate that was regulated by the advancement of the technology of the hardware. Mm -hmm. And where now cryptocurrencies and these platforms, and uh, like why I'm out here, you know, the platform there creating 
or I guess we're creating, uh, is, is absolutely amazing. And it's only going to take like six months. And this thing's going to roll out and Hollywood's going to shit themselves. <laughs> because it's, it's, it's literally going to replace the power structure of Hollywood and actually decentralize, decentralize in, entertainment and reward everyone involved in the in, entertainment and also reward the viewer. It's it's it it uh, it's we're re we're reaching we're reaching such a point that that technology is allowing value to exist in places that it's never existed. Yep. Uh, a perfect example is actually the basic attention token. Yep. You know, I mean, and, and, and I do not own any, well, no, I, I may own a little. And when I say a little, maybe 20 bucks. That's like the people who send it to you, who watch you on right. a brave browser. Yeah, right. I mean, that's, a, that's a prime example. They created something and data has been a big issue. So I think that the Brave browser is going to continue to garnish new users. And uh, the basic attention token is the native cryptocurrency of that uh, network there. Now, you can send it, receive it, whatever. And people are like, well, how does that generate value? And really, my philosophy on a lot of these is value generation can be caused by utilization of a network, which causes value appreciation of that network. If you only oh. have one native cryptocurrency for that network, theoretically, that extra use case or that extra usage should drive value too. So Yeah, plus that's, uh, uh, and I don't think I'm announcing anything that anyone doesn't know, but uh, basic attention token is, uh, is, as you're watching, like, whatever you're watching, like Netflix or Roku or whatever, advertise, advertisers are going to actually be paying you to watch their advertisers. Now, they, they aren't actually going to send you a dollar or nothing like yeah. that, but, you know, very small fractions that will accumulate in, in a wallet that exists on or in your TV yeah. or in your Roku device or, or who knows? Well, you'll probably be able to import an existing wallet and, you know, and accumulate there. We're, we're reaching a point where, where your attention, uh, humans, Time outside of clocking in and clocking out of work is going to have value. And this is when, now I've heard rumors, nothing official, but I've heard rumors by people that have been in meetings that like Facebook, it, uh, they will have a coin. Yeah. Uh, and you will be rewarded in that coin for the amount of activity activity on their platform, just like um, uh, Twitter. And, and I mean, look at Jack lately. My God, that guy turned into a cryptocurrency. Yeah, leader. yeah he loves uh, Bitcoin, especially. So uh, he's doing his thing. And then he actually is with Square in the Cash App, too. So, you know, he's trying to uh, continue to push that forward and make it easier. You know, originally, you couldn't you couldn't take off the Bitcoin. It was just for trading. Now, if you do a KYC, you can actually remove the Bitcoin, so you kind of have the private key. And then now the biggest news is that that tipping integration to uh, Twitter, where you can do Lightning Network tips. Uh, via yes. Twitter. So I think that's massive on a macro point, because people who don't know about crypto are on Twitter. They'll see the Lightning Bolt. They'll be like, oh, Bitcoin, what's this? Oh, maybe. And then big influencers, like, maybe I can add this and get some extra tips this way, too. Because until recently or until now, you can't monetize Twitter. You know, there's... The Lightning Network integration now. Rapids is trying to make a tip bot. XRP as a tip bot. But other than that, yeah. you don't monetize. If you have a bunch of followers on Twitter, it's meant nothing. At least YouTube gives us a little bit of ad revenue. It, uh, 
and uh, let's see, Litecoin has um, has an app where you can actually transmit Litecoin over Facebook. That's pretty cool. It it it's you know he people are actually building and and creating, but once Twitter. Because, I mean, think of the users. Oh, my God. Yeah. You know, and once Twitter announces that not only can you transact, uh, but you can actually add. What happens when Twitter launches a button where you can buy Bitcoin? Yeah, right. I mean, hello, mass adoption. <laughs> yeah. And, and we'll we'll really kind of really kind of and I'm actually uh, I'm actually talking to your viewers, not so but you. Uh, really take a second on on where is Twitter gonna ape AI into and get those Bitcoin? You know, there's only one place I know that has that much liquidity and that much volume. Well, actually, too, uh, that that would be either, well, I guess maybe it'd be three. Gemini, um, uh, Coinbase, and free and freaking Binance. Yeah. Uh, no one else has, and and if you think about it, the first friggin' day that. Twitter allows purchase of friggin' Bitcoin. That's going to drain whoever they aim EI into mm-hmm. any Bitcoin on their platform. Yeah. So, and I don't think it might not even be that too far away because, like I said, Jack has a you know obviously a strong connection with Square and the Cash App, and uh, they already have that whole infrastructure set up to where you can you can purchase uh, Bitcoin there. So, I mean, I think that the code is there if they decide they want to integrate it into Twitter. I think that's a great opportunity there. So we'll see. I have a feeling that once Twitter um, is once they launch, um, I I I think you'll see like Facebook and you'll see all of these major platforms just hop on board because then you can transact and shoot your Bitcoin that you have on your Twitter over to your Facebook. Yeah. And, you know, well, on top of that, if, if it's a, a, a revenue generating process, like say they do Bitcoin, but it's like a one cent charge for a trade or to buy it on Twitter, well, then everybody wants to jump on board if it's actually getting revenue because they are publicly traded companies. They have a fiduciary obligation to make money for their traditional stockholders. So if yeah. it makes money, they're going to implement it. And Jack's already bullish on Bitcoin. And cryptos, he does say he's primarily bullish on Bitcoin. But uh, so it's only a matter of time if they can figure out a way to make it work for all their users easily. And if they make any sort form of revenue, all traditional companies are trying to trying to keep their shareholders happy. Absolutely. And uh, I think that the reason Jack is, you know, yeah, go Bitcoin is because he's, he's like all of us. When we originally got in, we're like, man, I'm buying Bitcoin. I don't know jack crap about these other coins. Then once Jack learns about Ethereum, then once Jack learns about like Ripple or whatever else he goes on to, you know, then he's like, well, holy crap, there's a whole, why, uh, maybe I add a link or maybe I uh, partner with an exchange or how maybe I buy an exchange. Yeah. You know, I and 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 the next thing you know, you have a friggin' Twitter exchange, and 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 any anybody who thinks that cryptocurrencies are going away or was a fad, yeah, well, so were zippers. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, it it's I I honestly believe. 2019 is, and I'm I'm thinking within a few months. Now I'm not saying Bitcoin's gonna have like this 
huge just elevator, you know, rise up in like a couple of days. But once we clean up the exchanges, um, and it, oh no, is it the FBI? No, I was just looking at big, I was about to say Bitcoin's at 4150 now. So, I mean, off the lows of 3124, you're looking at a 30% rise already. And in traditional markets, you'd be happy with 30% over the course of three years. And that happened. Oh, you'd be happy with that over a lifetime. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> like I got my Apple and look at it's up. It, it, it's, if, if, if you've never done like the mathematical calculation of, of avail, available Bitcoin, not existing Bitcoin, available Bitcoin, because there's a lot of Bitcoin that's, you know, on laptops that are in landfills. Yeah. And, uh, and Jim, last I heard, they're thinking there's maybe 12.5 to 14 million out there that are actually owned and, and actually, like, you can claim them. Um, that's not a lot. That's not a lot at all. I think, there, I think there's something like 20 million millionaires in the world or something. So if every millionaire went in one Bitcoin, they couldn't even have it. That's why I always say accumulate. If you guys want to get in and you want to get in the altcoins, great. Do your research. There's money to be made or there's going to be survivors. But start off by accumulating one Bitcoin. Get one Bitcoin, put it on a Ledger Nano S or the new Ledger X if you want to try that out in March and just put that in cold storage and then do whatever you want from there. But Get one Bitcoin and you'll be one of the few uh, if this thing and when this thing becomes mainstream. And it's, I had a conversation with a guy like two weeks ago. And his argument was, well, you let me know whenever Bitcoin's a global currency, then I'll invest in it. And I go, okay, I'll send some Bitcoin over to Japan right now. There you go. It, it's a global currency. And and he said, well, you know when people are using it. And I said, well, then I'll send some Bitcoin over to Japan right now. I got a friend over there. Yeah. I'll shoot him some Bitcoin. Uh, that's being used. Yeah. And it his argu his argument trickled into, well, when the mainstream media is using it. And I'm like, what are you, what are you, stupid? Well, a couple I mean, things. Number one, if you, a lot of these third world countries that are having all these monetary issues, Venezuela, Turkey, Australia, and others, Venezuela in particular, hyperinflation with their fiat, and now they're all starting to use crypto because, well, the, the uh, transactionals, for volume or their exchange for the peer-to-peer, -peer, what is it, local Bitcoins, is that yeah. all highs, even at these low prices, because they are forced to find some way to get involved with something that will hold value because fiat currency in their country is as good as toilet paper and their government is blocking all U.S. customs. So the United States is trying to donate money, food, whatever, and it's getting blocked out because they don't want any of that. So what's your option? You got Bitcoin yeah. down there, Dash down there, Digibyte, like they got to do something. So, I mean, there's your kind of your proof right there so absolutely and and it it he we use cryptocurrency out of choice they're using it out of absolute necessity yep. and and that is when something is it's not only adopted it's ingrained into the culture once once as once it, it hits a tipping point of usage in like Venezuela uh, or wherever, that's when, as I've always said, Walmart doesn't care what they get paid in. No. You know, Walmart will take credit cards. They'll take a check if you got a driver's license. That uh, They'll take cash. Anything that represents general usage of exchange of value 
Walmart will jump on that crap like it's going out of style because they don't care as long as they can exchange it for whatever currency that that uh, that their actual corporation, I'm assuming U.S. You know, dollar, um, will use because they don't care. They just if if in Venezuela the currency was um, was eggs, Walmart would they accept eggs. <laughs> you know, they don't care. They just. And whatever, whatever, whatever the people use, that's what these larger corporations and small, smaller corporations yeah. will also use. And then also going back to your friend's argument, the other thing is, oh, let me know when it gets mainstream or media starts talking about it. Well, the thing is, at that point, now you're paying two, three, four x the price just to to enter and participate on the network. If you wait, like, yes, you're, you're we're all speculators here at these levels. But if you believe in the tech, you're seeing the macro fundamentals building. I, I'll tell you what, I work for an institutional financial advisor, and they would not be spending all this time researching money, research and development money to build these platforms if they weren't going to push it on their clients. Now, whether they're going to use it for everyday purchases or if they're just trying to make money off it, regardless, they're going to push it on their clients. It's a finite supply. Do the math on su supply and demand. You learned it in sixth grade, and that's where it's going. So, you know, things are looking pretty constructive here on the charts now, and by the time we get to 5,000, all those people that were just shorting will be buying. Then when we get to 8,000, your friend will be buying. Then when we get to 15,000, everybody who bought the last top will be buying. You know, that's just the nature of the beast and the nature of uh, cyclical markets. But uh, you want to be the one buying on the accumulation phase, which is now, not the one FOMOing in at, at the end when everybody else is actually using it. Especially if you're spending all the time now learning about it. If you're watching this video then and you're 20 minutes into this video, then don't be getting cute with all your trades. Yes, we like doing swing trades to add to the bags, but focus on accumulation. Focus on ways you can get more money into the market or create passive income through staking, master noting, mining, just participating. Uh, a lot of these projects, if you just participate, you actually get some cryptos as they're trying to just expand the knowledge and the usage as well. So, yeah, and um, and to your point, um, point. Um, just like a couple of minutes ago, is uh, is all these larger platforms, and and I'm talking like the the in the intercontinental exchange and Pact and friggin' Fidelity and all. You have to understand something, and all of your viewers right now. I want you to let this absorb into your head. These corporations have, their job is to sell financial product. And with the rate of return of cryptocurrencies over the last like eight years, these people are gonna be push, pushing cryptocurrencies at least there they will advise now let me explain how this works and you at uh, you probably all you already know it there uh, how these guys make money is they actually make money whenever for their clients trade out of one thing into another and then at the end of the quarter or at the end of the year, if they made a gain, then they get a bonus and all this other stuff. But when these products are available, you don't think that every salesman in there is going to, uh, 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 hey, hey there, Bob, yeah, yeah, hey, Bob, this is Bob. Yeah, hey, uh, yeah, hey, we got access to that Bitcoin now. And uh, really, we're really recommending that you slide maybe two, maybe five, percent in you, nothing big Bob you know let's just put your toe in there you know because you know the key is Bob diversified you, we got to keep you diverse and all these sales people are going to generate trades into this new product number one because they get a little bump in the paycheck and number and number two 
they get a little bump in the paycheck. That's yeah. it, you know. Yeah. And, and exactly, yeah. it, even if they do like what the like, for example, the company I work for usually they recommend, you know, like you said, three to five percent in commodities, whether that's gold, silver, oil, whatever it may be, uh, just as a diversifier because it t traditionally doesn't correlate with the overall market. So Bitcoin, it's probably going to be a non-correlating asset. Non-correlating asset means it's not following the trend. If the stock market crashes, Bitcoin can still gain in value because there's nothing tying those two together. So they're going to say take two to five percent. A lot of these asset, a lot of these big companies have hundred billion, one trillion, three trillion assets under management. You can do the math on what five percent is of all those assets. And then, like you said. They get the initial trade volume action to make money, but then also if they outperform, which cryptos have a high alpha, high volatility, you can outperform. You make a bonus or a percentage of that profit. So I mean, it's a win. All win so. And 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 a, it's a global market. That that if I was in that industry. I would explain to my clientele that that investing in Litecoin or Bitcoin or whatever coin you know is available on the uh, on the actual platform. It it's it's there's global pressure somewhere all the time. Well, and that's another thing. It's a twenty four seven market. Totally yeah. different. Traditional market is Monday through Friday for eight hours a day. That's it. So exactly. Global. There ain't no ringing the bell. No. You know, there ain't no one ringing the bell on Bitcoin. It's literally once, and I've I have preached this on my channel for years now. Once the structure is created, as that's what. ICE and like BACT and Fidelity and all these other infrastructures of large um, trading and uh, cust solutions are built. Good night. You're going to see Bitcoin go to apps. I'm not even talking we, we, we don't even have to give a price prediction. Just recently, the uh, president of IBM's blockchain uh, uh, sector uh, did a video, and he said that he they're talking about their new project using Stellar Lumens, using Stellar's blockchain. Uh, it's going to kind of be competing with uh, Ripple as far as remittances for banking systems. They said XLM will be one of the options, fiat currencies, maybe even a Bitcoin. But he said in order for Bitcoin to be a true monetary system where large values can actually be transmitted efficiently and needs liquidity. In order for liquidity to occur, he says that you would need a $1 million Bitcoin price because that means every Satoshi would be equivalent to one penny uh, in terms of the US dollar. So, I mean, that's crazy. I mean, that's somebody who gets paid a lot of money, is yeah. very smart, and just yeah. telling you the philosophy and the economics behind what makes sense for a monetary system and the price association with Bitcoin. Now, does that mean it's gonna get there? Who knows? But I'm just saying, economically, think, well, that makes sense. It, it's it uh, especially with the inflation of all of the globe currency because a lot of people talk. Well, the U.S. dollar is inflated and all that. Yes, that yes, all that are a lot of that inflation is going to go into cryptocurrencies, but. That's only the la the labor representation represented by the U.S. dollar. The other global currencies that are also getting hyperinflated are not quite hyperinflated yet, but like the euro, the yuan. I mean, look at China. They cranked up the printing presses, and they're like, yes, put it on high and let that shit go. <laughs> <laughs> That's just kind of crazy too. You know, people are like a million dollars for Bitcoin. Well, you got to assume, well, maybe at current day, that's $150,000 Bitcoin because, you know, the US that is at 22 trillion. And then maybe we get some form of uh, increased inflation. I want to call it hyperinflation, but right now inflation is like 1% a year. Maybe we have 5, 10% a year. And then you start compounding that. Well, then 
a million dollar Bitcoin is probably pretty feasible. Uh, you know, when you're yeah. now in a milk cost, you're $20. In, in having a $1 million Bitcoin is absolutely feasible and add, and I think absolutely going to happen. Now, uh, the purchasing power of that $1 million, like you said, may be the equivalent of $100,000 right now, or who knows, maybe $10,000, yeah. you know, but also if, um, if you have any, any loans that are in a locked in interest rate, go ahead, Bitcoin, you know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Cause hell you cash out some Bitcoin, you pay off your house, which is locked in that an actual fixed interest. And your one million dollar Bitcoin is going to pay off your two hundred thousand dollar house, yeah. and you're not even going to take a whole Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day it's coming. <laughs> That's really all the topics I had for you. You know, we talked about cryptos, we talked about some news, some price predictions, and of course, I want to reiterate, guys, the Bitcoin Ben, world's largest crypto meetup, is occurring April sixth in Blanco, Texas, right by Austin and San Antonio, which are both international airport so anybody can fly here like i said the founders from rapids are flying in from the uk we have people flying in from new york california australia canada they're all coming down you guys should come down and join be a part of that it's 20 bucks all to charity should be fun not just like hey we're in a room talking about cryptos it's just going to be open you know it's a it's a wild west city there's a museum there there's going to be i think a mechanical bull there's going to be a bunch of teams yeah. a bunch of giveaways and you're I 45 minutes away from some big cities you know I will be riding the electric bull. Well, see, that's worth it right there, guys, to watch Bitcoin yeah. Ben. <laughs> and I think the, uh, I see your hat there. The data bunker guys are going to be down there as well, aren't they? Yes, yes. Uh, they will be there and a lot of, a lot of the projects and like John, Kim, a ton of influencers, yourself, like me, like Big Swear, or Jason up floor, um, and yes. I also I also think Nanu Burks is going to be there doing some kind of live yeah. Bitcoin painting too, which is going to be pretty cool to see. Uh, Nanu Burks uh, does a lot of crypto related artwork that is sold for a lot of money for charity and for herself and or for projects. So uh, be pretty exciting to see some live and artwork. Live right music. It, it's 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 literally going to be. I um, I I was actually doing an interview like a week maybe two weeks ago and they're like dude this is like the because the interview i was doing they were kind of like <laughs> okay, it is in enjoying the green and um and they're like it's gonna be like woodstock man <laughs> like woodstock the crypto woodstock okay well, whatever come on up <laughs> we're all end up rolling around in mud can people just show up and buy tickets there when they get there or should they buy them beforehand uh I would suggest, um, do you have a link? Have I actually? I'll put that in the description below. I have Wild West Crypto Show uh, website up here right now. So I'll put that. Yeah. All the links will be in the description below. I'll link Bitcoin, Ben, Twitter. Wild West Crypto will be linked. Maybe if I remember Data Bunker and some of the other influencers that uh, are going to make it down there will all be in the bottom of this YouTube video. So you can check out and see some of the people that will be at the event and why you should come out and uh, enjoy this meetup. I know a lot of them in the past are $1,000, $2,000. People can't afford that. If you have enough money to play, pay for a plane ticket, it's 20 bucks, and I'll buy you a burger when you get down there. <laughs> yeah, plus, just drive. You know, yeah. I, There's a ton of people that are just loading up their car and be like, you know what, hell with it. We'll just drive down. Because it's, it, it's um, uh, there'll be plenty of parking there's an area that people are actually going to park and we are going to have this huge friggin' bus that will bring you over to the area and there'll be food and there'll be beer. Um, and there's, there's a, a whiskey distillery right next door. So if you like whiskey, you can go over there and watch them make it. It's, oh, it's pretty cool. It's going to be a good time. That's about all I have. Do you have anything, uh, last things you want to add about the cryptocurrency ecosystem before you head over to your meeting? Any last uh, comments besides buy Bitcoin? 
that's about it, brother. Buy Bitcoin <laughs> and hodl. There you go. Thanks for coming on the show, Bitcoin Ben. Hopefully you share this on Twitter. You can use it for your show. And uh, hopefully we can continue to spread the word of cryptocurrencies and the Bitcoin Ben world's largest crypto conference. Make history and be in. Is it going to be the 2020 Guinness Book of World's Record book? Is that what it's going to be? Yeah. Yeah. There yep. you go. That's what it's about. Thanks, Ben. All right, Nick. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. No problem.